afternoon. It's a weekend. These numbers might be low. People are staying home for a couple of days, see if they get any better. So at this point, I think we have to believe this is respiratory. Maybe fomites, too. What's that, fomites? Uh, it refers to transmission from surfaces. The average person touches their face two or three thousand times a day. Two or three thousand times a day? Three to five times every waking minute. In between, we're touching doorknobs, water fountains, elevator buttons, and each other. Those things become fomites. Is this something we want to release to the press, respiratory and fomites? And how's the public going to react to that? Hard to say. A plastic shark in a movie will keep people from getting in the ocean, but a warning on the side of a pack of cigarettes... We're going, going to need to walk the government through this before we start to freak everybody more. out. I mean, <laughs> we can't even tell people right now what they should be afraid of. We tried that with swine flu, and all we did was get healthy people scared. It's the biggest shopping weekend of the year. I think we need to consider closing the schools down. And who stays home with the kids? People that work at stores, government workers, people <clears throat> that work at hospitals. When will we know what this is? What causes it? What cures it? Things that keep people calm. What we need to determine is this. For every person who gets sick, how many other people are they likely to infect? So for seasonal flu, that's usually about one. Smallpox, on the other hand, it's over three. Now, before we had a vaccine, polio spread at a rate between four and six. Now, we call that number the R naught. R stands for the reproductive rate of the virus. Any ideas what that might be for this? How fast it multiplies depends on a variety of factors. The incubation period, how long a person is contagious, sometimes People can be contagious without even having symptoms. We need to know that, too. And we need to know how big the population of people susceptible to the virus might be. So far, that appears to be everyone with hands, a mouth, and a nose. Once we know the r not, we'll be able to get a handle on the scale of the epidemic. So it's an epidemic now. An epidemic of what? We sent samples to the CDC. In 72 hours, we'll know what it is, if we're lucky. Clearly, we're not lucky. Yeah. A young woman in Minnesota recently traveled to China. Son also died. As of this morning, 87 cases, 15 deaths. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I worked. You? Really? Texas. Salmonella. Ooh. Pretty limited. Mine was great, thanks. No. Pleomorphic, but tends toward ovoid in shape. Mm -hmm. I can see some structures on the surface that look like glycoproteins, but there's nothing morphologically pathognomonic. We tested all of her antibodies. I didn't see much cross-reactivity. Her body had no idea what to do with it. It just kept amplifying. Send it to Sussman in San Francisco. If he doesn't know what it is, nobody does. Shows novel characteristics and appears to be chimeric in origin. Virus is 15 to 19 kilobases in length and containing 6 to 10 genes. Typical of a paramyxa virus, Godzilla, a potentially King a Kong mutant on and Frankenstein, kind of, 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 all in hold one. Hold on, shit. I'll, I'll call you back. And you've got it in there, haven't you? Oh, really? Look, Where did get it come away from, from here, Alan. You're not industrial, a doctor and you're not a writer. Organism. Yes, I am a writer. Yes, I am. Blogging is not writing. It's graffiti <laughs> with punctuation. <laughs> 